Hello, I'm Nick Knight, and this is my assistant, Brit. Um, we're talking to you about the um, techniques and things we use for our Gareth Pugh film, which has just launched. Um, it was a four-day shoot, uh, which is actually quite a long shoot for a fashion film, and each day was a completely different setup. So we had different cameras, um, and we had different approaches to each, each particular day. So, Britt, can you tell people yeah. a little bit which cameras we used? Uh, so we decided to use a range of Sony cameras. We used a couple of FS5s and some A7s. Um, the main reasons for choosing these cameras was we were showing it at the IMAX, so we were going to project the film on a 2K projector. So we needed to shoot in 4K, and the FS5s are a really good practical camera for this because you can shoot at 4K and have the resolution, but the bodies are quite small, so it means they're super adaptable with lenses. They can sit on a tripod, and the whole setup can, beca can become quite compact and quite easy to maneuver around, which is really important for you when you're making films. Yeah, well, I, we have a particular approach to making fashion films. It's actually very different from most approaches to making film. We work in a really, really pared down way. I mean, for me, fashion films come from fashion photography and from that language. So I think it's so important that the a filmmaker actually holds their own camera. So we use very, very simple. All of the filming on the Gareth Pugh film was done between myself, Britt and my other assistant Rob. Um, so it's just the three of us making these films and often it's just Britt and I. Um, so we shoot in a very, very pared down way. We don't have a big team around us. I don't want a big team around me, to be honest. I think it's so important. If you think about when you're taking a photograph, every slight change, every millimetre to one side or the other is really crucial. It's like tuning an instrument. It has to be perfect. And it's only the photographer or the filmmaker that will know that. So I never ask somebody else to hold my film camera. I always hold it myself. I work in a team with Brit and with Rob, and I will trust Brit and Rob to be artistic with their filmmaking. So it's not that I'm just saying to them, keep on doing this movement. They have to see things happening in front of them and they have to react to them at the same time. And I think what's important is we work with Nick full time. And so we are there with Nick from the beginning. We know his references. We're there in the meetings with the designer. We're there with the set designer. We do the lighting as well. I think with some film crews, camera operators kind of come. And because on a film set, everybody has a very specific job, they sort of are just focused on getting their job right. Whereas with us, because we know references, because we know what you're looking for, because we know what the lighting's going to look like, it means that we can approach it, as you said, in a much more artistic way. And I think it just means that, in that sense, we all work together. And the footage we get at the end is a lot more cohesive, and we're all trying to get to the same thing. Yeah, but it is a super, super paired back team. Um, on my camera, I usually have a focus puller, but otherwise, Britt, you're focusing yourself, and Rob's mm -hmm. focusing himself. Um, so it's really, you know, it, it's an inc incredibly small team, which means we're very manoeuvrable. Um, and also, it's, um, as Britt was saying, it's, I'm asking for Britt and from Rob for their artistic vision. It's not a technical thing in that way. Um, and we don't tend to use dollies, we don't tend to use tracks. We have a hand holding, and one of the nice things about the cameras we use mm -hmm. is that I can just take it off the tripod and I can yeah. go, I can sort of go. My job is to make. Nick feel as flexible and as able to do whatever he wants when he gets on set. So as I was saying with FS5s is obviously we slightly, the bodies are small and they're super easy to maneuver. We didn't compromise so much on lenses because we understand that that was able to give you the clarity and the good colors and the good picture that you get at the end. But what's really important for us is that we can make it small and compact. So if Nick wants to pick it up and Nick wants to get straight into the model's face and really have that connection with her, then he can do that. And I think it means that all your films very much feel like you, and you can see yeah. your sort of techniques and stuff in them. Yeah, I mean, often I'll just swap and use my phone. People are, are, are quite scared about using phones for, for things like this, but actually, even showing a film at the IMAX, which is a, the biggest screen in Europe, and sort of 50 foot tall, iPhone footage was fine, um, and phone footage can be fine for it. It just depends what you're trying to say. The same thing with camera movements. If you're trying to move a camera, it doesn't always have to be on a track. It doesn't always have to be on dolly. It can be handheld, and sometimes that agitation in the film gives it mm -hmm. its feel. So I think which is especially good with the Gareth film, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I think what's a really important thing to say is 
when you shoot with the film team, often you sort of, the role of the director is that they kind of take a stand back, they have camera operators, the director doesn't touch the camera, and his constant and his reference point for what he's shooting is often a monitor. The monitor is often 10 yards back from where the model is, and it just completely disattaches you from the model and your relationship, and ends up with the director having probably about five people in between him and the model, which is the complete opposite way to how you work. Yeah, well, it's... A, if you imagine any fashion photographer working, like a Helmut Newton or a, a Guy Bourdin or a Cecil Beaton, or who, can you imagine them not looking at the model, not actually having physical contact with the model? It's so important, that relationship within fashion photography is so important. Therefore, when it's about the clothes moving, that relationship should still be there. You have to have that. So I get a, away from all of that sort of film way of working. Films are great and they do their thing, but fashion films are a completely different medium. It's a completely new medium. And in my belief, it has to come from the language of fashion photography. And it's those sorts of things. It's that sort of integral relationship, which is between the image maker or the photographer or the filmmaker and their model. That can't be broken. And you cannot be turning your back on your model and looking at a monitor. Um, I really believe that's, that's, that connection is so important. And I think as my job as an assistant is to understand what Nick wants and understand the, Nick, the way that Nick wants to work and to make sure I can create that for him. So... But it's making, it's finding that balance and making that compromise and creating setups that work. So, for example, for one of the shots in the Gareth Yee film, we needed, um, we had a group of dancers from Wayne McGregor's company, which were beautiful and amazing. And you really wanted to get in there. You really, there was about 50 or so dancers in, and we wanted to get a shot where you really felt like you were going into the dancers and you were among them. Um, a quite literal sort of instant approach would be to get a massive crane and get all these grip equipment but I think as with budget restrictions and team and the way that Nick wants to approach it instead we used a gimbal and an easy rig which meant that we could physically hold the camera still but still be able to get that camera movement and be in with the dancers and so it's just about adapting your setup to make it work for you and it can be done it's just yeah but you just have to keep it as as, as personal to you as possible so the technical part of it and the, all the sort of technical um, machinery and all the sort of, you know, the, the people that come with it, don't overtake it. You have to remember you're the artist and it's your voice people want to hear. So you, you know, in that way, it needs to be as pure as possible. And technique can often get in the way. So that's one of the reasons we strip everything right back.